Today, we are going to conquer some fears. Look at this hot dog mess. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Today, it is finally, finally, in all the years on YouTube, this is my very first swimsuit and we're going to do it, but we're gonna do it big. This is the swimsuit of my dreams. And let me tell you why this is my very first swimsuit. I was super, super insecure about doing this because I like to model them. I don't like just showing them on a mannequin and stuff like that. So it's taken me this many years to just to get over myself. And as much as I am all about body positivity, I was not fully embracing this. And so today we are conquering some fears and just doing it in an amazing way. So a couple weeks ago, I posted this super expensive Joanna Ortiz bikini set. And I absolutely love the ruching on the side, the ruffles, we've been doing ruffle crazy lately. And so I absolutely love this. It is no longer available anywhere. And so I decided to go thrifting for some men's button up shirts. So I thought that I was gonna find these in like the, like the men's swimsuit type shirts, but I found that if you go, this is a tip for you guys who are looking for fabric, clothes that just you want them for fabric, look for work clothes. Most people, when they go to work, they have, especially if they have to wear a uniform, they have to buy multiples. And when they give them away, they give away all of them because they no longer have that job or, you know, you know, God forbid that person passed away. Um, then you'll see multiples. And that's exactly what I found in the exact color that I was looking for. Yes, they were about $2 a piece. So that was amazing. And I'm super excited, super excited to share this with you guys. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do for this tutorial is we want to take a couple measurements. The first one we're going to do is our girth measurement. It goes in between your legs and measures from wherever you want your swimsuit bottoms, your bikini bottoms to hit in the front and to the back. Mine, I actually want them to go probably about 29 or 30 inches. I want mine pretty high. And then you also want to make a bust measurement under the bust, um, on top of the bust, and underneath your arms, just to have. Those are always good measurements to have. 33, bust measurement, <laughs> not, not much more. 38. Whenever you're measuring something, you wanna measure the fullest part. So if it's your hips, fullest part, bust, fullest part, above uh, 36. In addition, you also want to measure like how long over your bust the top needs to be. So mine is about eight inches. Let's go to the table. The reason I picked this fabric is because um, of the stretch and these are very similar to uh, the types of fabrics that you would see bathing suits made out of. I love the color of the Inspiration swimsuit. So um, finding these three was like, yes, it was like meant to be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna cut the front portion out and the back portion out from the shirt. All right, this is taking a while. So we'll be done in three, two, one. So I have the back of one shirt and we are going to cut the front panel and the back panel of the bikini bottom. We need to take just a couple more measurements for the bottoms because that front panel, I want to see how much of it I want to be the front panel and how much I want to be the ruching. I think I'm going to take it like eight inches at the top down to like nine inches at the bottom. And so that means the ruching will come to here on me and I think that makes sense. Another measurement you'll need is if you're going to have a seam in the middle of that 30 inches of girth measurement you want to know where like the seam of your pants whatever you have on and you kind of want to have that in your mind too. Mine is 12 and a half and right at the middle <laughs> and my crotch how, how long is that before you need to start curving and it's just like three inches. So what we're going to do is draw on here the shape that we need. And this is gonna include a lining. So what we have for that front panel of the bikini bottom, this eight inches up at the top, um, nine inches at the bottom, a gentle curve to match the two, and then 
um, the length is about eight and a half. I extended it to nine for seam allowance. And then we gently curve down towards the crotch. Because the front portion is different length than the back portion, um, because yeah, your butt is longer. At least in a lot of women, not all. We're going to fold this so that we can do the back part. And I'll show you how. I made a mark on my half line, that measurement that you saw me take, about 12 inches. Let's do four and a half to make sure we have seam allowance. There and there. And then down at the bottom, it is going to be 10 inches. So we're going from nine to 10 inches. When I was doing my curve, I used my flexible ruler and that's what it's called um, if you're looking for one. And I'm just going to hold it so that it has a gentle curve. We're gonna go with that. I do have extra, like I have a whole extra shirt, I think. So I'm gonna be a little bit more brave than um, if I didn't. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm actually gonna put it right side to right side and I am going to go ahead and sew the tops together as well as the crotch seam together. And we're gonna leave the sides open so we can add in the ruching. And I'm gonna use my serger because the serger is going to help the seams to stay stretchy, keeps their ability to stretch. If you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and use a shallow zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. I just want a 10 inch strip. I'm gonna make it as long as I possibly can. So now we have two 10 inch wide strips that are going to be gathered for the ruching sides. I think these will be long enough. If not, we can add some more. I'm not gonna double these up. So one will be for one side and one will be for the other. And we'll see how we like it. If you're doing it on a fabric that only stretches one way, then make sure you do it so that the stretch is going around your body, not going up and down. For each of these, I'm gonna go ahead and add a zigzag stitch along the long side so it can draw up. We are all sewn up, crotch and the ends. You should put it up to you at this point to see if you are on target or whether you need to cut another piece or what. And I am going to take these they're actually about the right the right length all right so we'll make sure that this is getting turned under this goes toward the inside this goes toward the inside and we're going to put it inside and line it up with that and then we may have to draw it in in fact i would rather draw it in now come on don't be extra we're gonna put it inside line it up there Add that pin back or a clip, whatever you wanna do. Since we have it sandwiched in, we're gonna go ahead and sew that down. And we can sew it down on the regular sewing machine because we don't need it really to stretch vertically. Um, we wanna definitely have that stretch on the horizontal, but not necessarily on the vertical. We have our pocket or ruffles, <laughs> and we're gonna try to get it through the other side. Let's see if we can do it and how it turns out. Yay, good so far. So that is the front half of our bikini bottom. Now, in order to connect the back, we're doing a top stitch. I am not looking forward to this. We're gonna fold this in and tuck this inside the best way we can. Pin it. The back, of course, it's longer, so we're just going to extend our ruffles out a little bit more. Actually, what I could do is do it like this and sew it down on one side, just this side. Sew it down on that side so that it would naturally turn in, and then all I would have to do is do a top stitch on the other side. So I think rather than tucking it in, I may do that because it'll help me to just make sure that this is sewn on both sides. All right, y'all, look at this hot dog mess. Oh gosh. Okay, so I have it pulled up to about where I want the height to go. And I'm just gonna take my heat erasable pen and just draw the actual curve that I want. And that's gonna bring this up as well. So we're gonna have to take part of this seam out. Well, actually the whole thing, because then we have to redistribute the ruffles. This is not hot, like, it needs to go to here. It's bunching because it doesn't have enough room 
and then it's too big in my waist so I'm just gonna have to put that side in more it needs some work <laughs> so the back actually is not as bad it's gonna fit pretty well so what I should have done is I should have sewed the ruffles in the back and not the front I was just worried about that top stitch I didn't really want to see it in the front so that's why I did that but optimally I would have sewn it in the back and then pulled these towards the front to see how it was fitting so I would know how much to put this little side ruffle in so that they fit the way I want them to I mean this is a hot mess and I do have them on inside out just so you know so yeah I think that would be much better if it cuts right there all right back to the drawing board and hey if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for we are doing amazing summer of cycles here you definitely don't want to miss them so hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing all right back to the video we pretty much have it all together but we do have a few things we want to do before we sew it all the way up i don't like how thick and big these seams are inside so I'm gonna turn it inside out one more time and serge these and then I probably will top stitch it maybe not the top stitch but definitely serge it so that it's not so thick and then you can see that I did sew it on one side so one side has a really nice stitch and I'm going to also serge this on the inside because you see in order to get them to fit I had to sew it in quite a bit right along the edge. We're gonna pin these like really well so that it sits correctly. And what I'm going to do is stitch in a ditch. I'm going to sew right inside the seam so that it looks like there is no top stitch. There's no seam. Can you see it on that side? On this side? You can, but that's the inside. This is how they look, not perfect but from the outside I think they're gonna look really good this is the inside no seam and this is the back not perfect like I said but it's gonna be on the inside so anybody looking that close you know well I think these are gonna be good now let's go to the top so we have the front and the back portion of another one of the shirts and all I want is an eight inch strip I can actually do it from this end and start to taper so I get the full length. All right, so we can start to curve it so that it tapers on the end. And the reason we're cutting so many layers is because this is going to have a lining as well. And like the front part is for one half, we're gonna connect it in the middle and then the back part is for the back half. Let's check these ends. We have that, so we can't use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut just that portion off. So we're gonna go ahead and connect these two along this edge and these two along this edge. So we're gonna lay these good side to good side and I am going to sew all along the edge and just leave one section open, you know, like probably from here to here. Here we go. We can go ahead and turn this right side out. And this type of material, when you iron it, you probably want a piece of like cotton or t-shirt fabric on top just to make sure it doesn't burn. Now we can go ahead and add a top stitch if we like. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and start our ruffle for the sleeve type thing. Once we close this up, when you do your top stitch, you know, that'll be part of you closing it up because it's gonna need a top stitch right here anyway to close it up. And then once we get finished, we'll make a piece to go over this, just like a bow that's going to cover this seam in the middle. So we have the back of our last shirt and I think this is all I'm gonna need for the ruffles. I'm hoping I'm gonna try to get two four inch ruffles out of this. I have measured and from like a strap on me, it needs to be 16 inches. As long as it's 16 inches, it's fine. So I'm hoping that if I cut this ruffle out on a curve, it's gonna be about 30 inches, then straighten it out, give it some folds, it'll work. That's what we're hoping. So I have this gentle curve, it's nothing extreme, but straightening out the inside of a curve will give that ruffle effect from the inspiration.
Okay, so you can see automatically when I straighten this out, it begins to ruffle. And the more curved you make it, the bigger those ruffles will be. So we're actually not ruffling a whole, whole lot. So hopefully the pleating will help. All right, so we have our ruffle for each side. Now I need some interfacing. I know what I'm going to do. So now we're just gonna take the interfacing and fold it the long way. This interfacing is like kind of stiff, so I am a little bit concerned. Now we can go ahead and cut it out. And I actually think we want it to be slightly less because I don't think I want interfacing in the seam, but just like really close to the seam. So now we have two pieces. One side of the interfacing is shiny. That is the side that irons on to the fabric. So we can go ahead and iron this down. And then once that's ironed, we will do good side to good side and sew up all the edges except for one. Now we can go ahead and turn it right side out. All right, so I can go ahead and press that again to make sure it's nice and flat. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to add top stitches all along the edge, kind of like the brim of a bucket hat. Give it some detail. So we'll decide how far away they should be, maybe a half inch a piece and then add those all along the edge. All right, so let me show you how I'm keeping them fairly about the same distance apart. When I go to the next line, I said I wanted them a half inch apart, so I find the half inch line, line up the previous stitch with that, and put the foot down. Then I move this little red tape to the edge of the ruffle. When I'm sewing, I'm only watching this point right here just to make sure that this lines up with the tape. And that's keeping them fairly the same distance. So here is one of our ruffles done with the lines that are pretty well spaced apart. The middle of my ruffle is shallower than the ends. That's because I wasn't super accurate about my curves. I was just kind of cutting, but uh, at this point, you know. I am basically going to take one strip for each strap and I want it to be more than 16 inches. So mine is actually more than 18 inches. So that's gonna be great because I need 16 inches for the strap and then some length to tuck down into the bra tops. We want to adjust this so that it is 16 inches long. The first part of it is going to be turned under and then remember it's gonna be like this. So I'm just gonna start folding until we get to a point where we're at 16 inches. They can be spaced apart um, the same or they can be spaced apart, you know, randomly. However you like. Put what movie that's from in the comments. However you like. I don't have a prize for if you guess it, but I'll give you a hint, a remake, or not a remake, a sequel just came out. Oh, that's 16 right there. And then I can tuck it. So we're gonna take this and lay it on top, sew it along the edge, fold it over, fold it again, double fold it, and then sew it along the other edge. This is a lot of fabric. Definitely don't finish that edge if you're doing it this way. Cause now I have an extra, what, four layers that I don't, shouldn't have had. Oh, my clips, come on. You're killing me, Smalls. We're getting to the home stretch. I am going to pin these in and we want it to be even. And we also need to match it in the back. This isn't exactly how the actual one is constructed, but this is an easier way. <laughs> and we've been going ruffle crazy lately. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So I can see this one is already falling down. So we want to make that tighter. This is going to pull it down a little bit, so maybe I shouldn't worry about it too much. That's gonna be pretty. Let's finish up. So once we get these, you gotta make sure that they're equal distance apart from the midline. You wanna open up the seam 
place it inside. And we're gonna pin it back together. And then we're gonna take this whole thing and, ah, fudge. Take the whole thing and sew it along the edge, like top stitch it along the edge. Then we'll come back and add a little piece. I'll probably do it like this. Fold it in, fold it in on each side, scrunch it, and then hand sew it underneath. Maybe not that wide. Maybe I'll sew it, sew it around the edge, put some interfacing in there first, sew it around the edge, give it this same detail, and then do it. That way it'll kind of match that. Finally, finally got through that. Now, I will try to go find a similar pattern and maybe link it in the description box. I particularly, me personally, I don't like working with patterns, but for something like this, I'm not gonna lie, it would have been helpful at least to have just a base pattern for the bottoms. But even without that, I am super, like super excited for this. I Oh my gosh. But before we do that, if you are interested in sharing your upcycles with a like-minded community, I do have a free Facebook group just for you guys to share and get feedback from other people, a positive community. The link is in the description box below. And if you're looking for more accountability, a class, then definitely hit that join button down below to learn about my upcycling class. We are getting to the end. That video will be coming out soon so you can see what comes out of that class. But I'm super excited about that but let's see how this swimsuit turned out <laughs> honey ha if I if it took me seven years to do a swimsuit I am so glad that it was this one this is, I say this, it seems like I've been saying this a lot. This is so me, like so me. Like honestly, I really wanted it to be just a little bit higher to hit that one divot. Like you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but even outside of that, I would feel perfectly comfortable wearing this on the beach, pool, wherever. But yes, I absolutely love this thing perfect color the ruffles make it girly but it has enough coverage for me um that i feel more comfortable with it you guys do like honestly do whatever makes you comfortable with these things if you want to cover all up if that is what you want to do do it if you want less coverage do it i just this is just a freeing moment for me. It's it's absolutely a freeing moment for me. And I'm just so grateful for you guys encouraging me to do this one. Now, like I said before, out of the uh, upcycles that I said I was scared to do, this did not win. But I decided to go ahead and do it because you guys, a lot of you guys wanted me to do this one. So I hope you guys are just as happy with it as I am. Let me know how you would make your swimsuit. One piece, two piece, however you would make it. Let me know down in the comments below. I am so curious to find out. And if you missed last week's video, I did make this. Like I said, out of work pants. People donate multiple, so look out for those. And I am wearing it in a slightly different way. I put it on to wear it for this video and then I just didn't put the arms in I was like oh my gosh I like it like this and it shows off that it was made from pants that is a detail that I absolutely love I love for my garments to have hints of what they were upcycled from so if you missed how this was originally worn go back to that video I'll link it right here but I absolutely love it this way as well I have other videos for you guys to watch right here and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.